Okay. Okay, wait. So it does evolve into a bug. Yeah. Okay. And there, that would be another two of them. Okay. So welcome to KDRT 95.7 in Davis, California. Today, for the next hour, we're going to have a group with us known as Space Funk. And these are Davis High School students. And uh, I saw them performing at the E Street Plaza. And I'm going to tell you guys a story because I sat down and uh, listened to you for a while. And this guy came up, maybe in his mid to late 20s, and he sat down next to me and he said, do you know these guys? I said, no. And he said, I was walking by and I didn't want to stay, but they just hit me here. I mean, it was amazing. He was just so, but on top of that, he wanted to be a teacher. And he was just so thrilled to see young people doing exceptional work. So you guys made an influence, at least on two people, including me. So I'm going to introduce Isabel and you're going to introduce the band for me. Hi, um, I'm Isabel. I play saxophone. This is Nico on bass and also Nico on drums and Evan on trumpet and Ben on piano. All right, our first song is pretty much going to be um, our version of Caravan. Thank you. 
me ask you, uh, how did you guys meet? How did you form Space Funk? We should talk to Ben about this. Ben. Ben is the, the keyboard guy. Well, it kind of started off at, um, here, let me take this. <laughs> it started off when I, I made a, a, I was interested in Latin jazz, so I made a, uh, me and the drummer made, uh, made a Latin jazz club at the high school, and um, the bassist was in our music theory class, and uh, Evan joined us. Evan, when did you join us? So, okay, so say it again. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of in the vicinity. I was kind of like involved in the band program already, and they just started talking to me about it, and it sounded like fun, and I didn't know how much more it would like turn into, but it was a really good idea. You know, uh, I, uh, I, I, I read Rolling Stone magazine, and that's all about music. So uh, they had some statistics there, and that said 1% of all the music sold in the U.S. On, uh, in uh, CD form is jazz. That's, that's very low. So I'm kind of curious why a group of young people have picked jazz as your go-to. Uh, who, who do you listen to uh, in jazz that prompted you to, to play this genre of music? Um, I don't know. I started playing jazz because my friends convinced me to audition for the jazz band in junior high. Uh -huh. um, but then I would say the person I listened to most that made me get more serious was probably Stan Getz okay. um, and like Sonny Rollins, so saxophone players, obviously. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a challenging form of music to play, so it's it's fun. It's more spontaneous than other kinds of music you can play. So. Okay. Anybody else? Do you want to say anything about that? Um, I guess I play it because it's more fun. I like being able to improvise and um, have the form, you know, not set previously. So if you want to try something different, you can just do it on the spot. Like look at your drummer, and he like kind of knows what you want to do, and um, basically write a song as you go along is very fun. So uh, he says when you look at your drummer, he kind of knows what you want to do. Uh, what kind of signals are you sending him? Well, so I can pick up like what he changes in his bass line and then change my drum part to fit his bass line. Or I can change my drum part and then he can change his bass line. And so we have this kind of relationship. Well, that's quite something. Uh, who follows who here then? Is it the drummer that sets the pace, or the, the keyboardist, or the bass player? Who sets the pace? The keyboard guy. <laughs> no, not me. Oh. It's more everyone is communicating with each other. And we all ha it's, it's hard because we all have to be in the same, same page. <laughs> yep. And that, that takes practice. So it, it, you, have to, you have to practice, and you have to, um, you have to be just completely ready for anything. Well, uh, we're going to ask you to play a couple more. But before I do, I'm going to send, uh, you mentioned Stan Getz. I'm going to send you a song okay. that Stan Getz plays with a trumpet player. And they kind of like talk to each other. It's a beautiful song. And I'm going to send it to you. And hopefully, you guys might like it. So what's the next song? Uh, there will never be another you. I know it. OK.
And uh, the bass player is going to go from an upright to uh, a regular bass, what I would call a regular bass. And uh, we're switching what kind of uh, saxophones are we switching from? Okay, on the ground there's an alto, and now I'm going to play tenor. Okay, very good. Uh, and I wanted to ask the uh, keyboardist, well, all of you, you're doing this without reading music, uh, and you just keep your eyes closed and your fingers seem to land on the right spots. How did that happen? You memorize the music. Simple as that. <laughs> no, but you're, you're improvising also, aren't you? Yeah, a lot, um, a lot of that is just knowing knowledge of music theory. And I mean, you can go without music theory, but it's 100% useful. You can just go by your ear. But um, knowing music theory is definitely uh, a, it's, it's, it's a tool. You shouldn't abide by it 100%, but you should use it in your music. And knowing it is really good, especially for improvising. So uh, I, a lot of musicians have told me this about music theory. I, I, do you learn that at, at Davis High? Uh, you can, yeah. You can take a class on music theory, but it's completely optional. And if you just kind of hear things sometimes, you don't, you don't have to use it, but yeah. So what is music theory? How can that help you in music? Well, it's really just an understanding of like all the chords, all the structures, all the notes, kind of everything. And you can use it when you're soloing, just like off the lead sheets, just reading all the chords and slowing to it. Right. But I think after a certain point, when you get familiar enough with the chords or what they sound like, you can just kind of feel it from there. Okay. And how many different types of music uh, bands or orchestra does uh, Davis High School have? Uh, jazz or? Any, any genre, just, ha you know, there's classical, there's probably marching bands. Uh, we have jazz. Many? Yeah, we have three bands, yeah. so concert band, symphonic band, jazz band, and then there are three orchestras and three choirs, so. so. So does that mean every student is playing something there? That's a lot of bands. Um, a lot of people double. A lot of people, people like, double. a lot of people double up. Okay. Like they've taken music theory and jazz band, and then like some people are in choir and band. So. Okay. Alrighty, well, we've switched gears. Uh, you're listening to KDRT 95.7, and the next song is gonna be? Chameleon. Here we go.
play East Street just every once in a while. So if you're coming out there on a Friday, you're likely to catch us sometimes. So. On East Street. East Street yeah. Okay. Already on Fridays. On Fridays. Yeah. Already. And the next song? It's called So What by Miles Davis. Sounds good. Sounds like we might get a little trumpet on this one, right?
Thank you. 